was the former conservative leadership candidate and Peterson Capital Chair, Rick Peterson. He's the co-founder of Center Ice Conservatives. Well, Rick, uh, welcome back to the program. I know you ran as a leadership contender twice. Now you've started something called the Center Ice Conservatives. Why? What is this? Thanks, Evan. It all started uh, seven or eight weeks ago with a group of us chatting and looking forward to the leadership race, but seeing um, a wide open part of the spectrum of the political spectrum in Canada, which is the center. Nobody has staked out a strong stance standing for the center. In our Conservative Party at times, the, uh, those of us who are in the moderate center seem to be a little bit um, alienated or not seem to be welcome at times. But on the other hand, uh, the Liberal Party has opened up the center given the fact that they've done the supply and confidence agreement with the, with the NDP. So there is, Evan, a very strong, robust group of Canadians, pragmatic Canadians in the middle, who are looking for centrist approach, mm -hmm. who are looking for pragmatic ideas and, and focusing on issues that are not necessarily top of mind in a leadership contest or in partisan political campaigns. So um, that's where we're standing. All we're going to be doing is providing a voice rolling out next Wednesday, and uh, stay tuned. You'll see what's happening. Okay, but, but look, a leadership race is fundamentally a partisan exercise, and, and you know Aaron O'Toole, the previous leader, tried to present himself as a centrist voice. This is not your grandfather's conservative party. He put a price on carbon. He brought out Brian Mulroney on the campaign trail. He was stabbed in the back, then in the front, he's tossed out, and he, didn't, he wasn't wanted. Wasn't that already a referendum on some guy that tried to be a centerized conservative? He was in the penalty box. Let's not go back, and I love the hockey analogies, uh, uh, Evan, thanks. Let's not go back. Here is, here is a, a, a campaign that's happening right now. And what we've got is we've got a couple of candidates that have really put their stake in terms of being centrists. If you look at Jean Charest's campaign, elements of Patrick Brown's campaign, um, I like what I'm hearing from Scott Atchison. Um, I hope Leona Aslev makes it to the, the final cutoff and, and even Bobby Singh in, in, in Toronto. So if you look at it, Evan, right now, the lines are clear in the sense that there are leadership candidates in this leadership race who totally understand and subscribe to the fact that we need to expand the conservative base to the center to the center. Now, this doesn't mean liberal light. People say, well, you guys are liberal light. 95% of Canadians people don't who say, don't... Sorry, people don't say... Pierre Polyevre said that. He called Jean Charest a liberal. He's called... I mean, is that is that what this is about? Honestly, let, let's be practical. Is this about your concern about Mr. Polyevre, who looks like he's the front runner? Pierre's a great messenger. He, he brings the message across very clearly. Evan, this is campaign politics, right? This is this is trying to divide, uh, not divide, but this is trying to carve out a niche. So unequivocally, at the end of the day, no matter who is the leader, this person is going to have to attract mainstream Canadians, 45 of the swing votes, or sorry, 45 of the ridings, Evan, in 2021, that were considered to be swing ridings in Canada. These are centrists. These are centrists. And the reason I think we're on the right track here is of the 50 people that are helping unroll our roll out our platform. Half of them are federal liberals. Half of them have said we don't like what we're seeing on the liberal side of it. Mm. We would really be liking somebody with some pragmatic ideas. And all we're going to be doing, Evan, is highlighting people, ideas, policies that focus on what mainstream yeah. Canadians are looking for. But but let me ask you. So so essentially, is this the old uh, progressive conservative? We are going to be fiscal conservatives and and socially liberal. So, so where would your group stand, for example, on social conservative issues like abortion? We have social conservatives members of the center rights conservatives. We have like 35, 40 conservatives. Different ones are following different leadership camps. So you can be a social conservative and you can acknowledge that the debate on abortion is largely behind us. You can recognize, you can be a social conservative, but you can recognize that Canada has pronounced on a woman's right to choose. What we are wanting to bring forth as a centralized conservatives is let's focus on things that are direct consequence to mainstream Canadians who don't follow the ins and outs of political debates and the back and forth of partisan politics, Evan, right? You play hockey. But you're basically pro-choice. I, I mean, I get it, but you're, you're pro-choice. Yeah. Like, you're saying you're pro-choice. Okay, what, price on carbon's been divided. You and I spoke about this, Rick. 
They Some did. conservatives say a price on carbon is deeply conservative. It's a market mechanism. Uh, the market determines pricing and externality and it finds efficiencies. Other conservatives say this is exactly what we shouldn't do. It's another government tax uh, and it makes the prices go up in a time of high inflation. Both claim to be conservatives. What's your view? Uh, what does the center right conservative say? Do you need a price on carbon? Kudos to Lisa Raitt and Ken Bosenko for their platform that they're coming up and, and talking about climate change. What the conservatives need to articulate, Evan, is that climate change is real and we accept it. If we go into the next federal election with people wondering, are these guys really serious about climate change? That's going to be the issue. And we're 0 for 3, Evan. We're 0 for 3. 2015, 2019, 2021. If that doesn't tell you, you can argue with me, but you can't argue with the math. If that doesn't tell you that you need to have a strong centrist view on key issues like climate change, like the military, like LGBTQ rights, if you can't come out and unequivocally state that we welcome all sorts of view, but we are pegging our big blue tent with the anchor pole in the middle, you're going to be in opposition forever. Not a good okay, spot. Okay, but does that mean a price on carbon? I think there should be a price on carbon. I like the Alberta, as I okay. talked to you this morning, Evan. Alberta's price on the intensity of carbon emissions, in my view, is the way to go. Right. The debate, the debate on the mechanism, Adam, is a is a very legitimate debate. Again, kudos to Lisa, kudos to Ken Bosenko. But there cannot be a debate on whether we need to put a price on carbon. That is where we cannot fail. All right.